and welcome to St. John Vianney as we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost. Our opening song is number 427, Creator Spirit by Whose Aid. Number 427, please stand. Creator Spirit by Whose Aid, Foundations first were laid. Alleluia, Alleluia. Give us thyself that we may see the Father and the Son by thee. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, on this great solemnity of Pentecost, coming together as God's family, with great confidence in his love and mercy toward each one of us, let us call to mind our sins, and ask for the Lord's pardon and his peace. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty, Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you 
take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. Let us pray. O God, who by the mercy of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the Holy Gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated for our readings from sacred scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one of them heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each one of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Come, 
unto our spirit of God, breathe in us now, we sing together. Spirit of hope and of light, fill our lives. Come to our spirit of God, come Send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Fill us with the fire of your love, in us now, bring us together. Come to us, dwell in us, change our lives, O Lord. Come to us, Spirit of God. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your Spirit. The face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Send us the wings of new birth, fill all the earth with the love you have brought us, that all creation now be shaken with love. Come to us, Spirit of God, come, Lord Jesus, send us your Spirit, renew the face of the Send us your spirit, renew the face of the A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Our Pentecost sequence is number 435, Come, O Holy Spirit, Come, number 434. Come, Holy Spirit, come. 
Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, 
When the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus again to them said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a delightful story about a young mother who, who bought a ticket to the a concert by Ignis Paderewski, the famous and great Polish composer and pianist. And she decided to take her five-year-old son with her, hoping that the experience at, the, at his first concert would encourage him in his own young efforts at music. She was delighted to see how close to the stage their seats were. And then she met an old friend and got so involved in talking with her friend that she failed to notice that her young son had slipped away to do some exploring. When eight o'clock arrived and the lights dimmed, the audience hushed to a whisper and the spotlight came on. Only then did the woman realize that her son was not at her side. And looking up, she saw her five-year-old boy on stage, sitting on the piano bench, innocently plucking the notes out of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. The young mother gasped in total disbelief. But before she could retrieve her son, the great Paderewski had walked onto stage, and he walked over to the piano, he leaned over to the boy and told him, don't stop, keep playing. And then leaning over the boy, Paderewski reached out his left arm and began to fill in the bass line. And then a few seconds later, he reached out his right arm, encircling the boy, adding a running obligato. Together, the great maestro and the little child, five years of age, mesmerized the audience with their playing. When they were finished, the audience broke into a thunderous applause. Many, I'm sure, forgot many of the pieces of the great Paderewski played that evening, but I'm sure no one will forget the treat they received in hearing the duet of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. We have a nice local uh, custom uh, connection with Paderewski, because uh, when he died in the United States, his heart was buried here in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia in Chestahova, the shrine of Our Lady of Chestahova. He was buried in the United States, and then later when uh, Poland was free, his body was returned to his homeland. But I like this image of the great maestro encircling the five-year-old at the piano because it's a fitting image to capture the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives who kind of encircles us uh, to encourage us, to uh, assist us, to guide us, to console us, and to protect us. Indeed, the Holy Spirit in the Gospels is, is called the paraclete. Now, it's a very interesting Greek word. The paraclete comes from two words, uh, the Greek word kolain, which means to call, someone come and, come, and, uh, come near me to call them. And paro means next to, alongside, like parallel lines run next to one another alongside. So the image of the paraclete literally is the one who calls us next to him so he can support us and advise us. And that's really the role of the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Perhaps another apt image would be a young a coach, a baseball coach, who stretch out his right arm and he calls his young player to his side. And there the nervous, perhaps even frightened player is, is, in the, is in the protection and in the care of the coach at that moment 
who will offer some calming and supporting words of encouragement. And it's what makes the difference for that young player to go into the game with, uh, with renewed enthusiasm, with, with renewed courage. I remember an older man sharing with me as a young priest how in his childhood was wrecked by alcoholism in the family. His mother and father were alcoholics and it was a very difficult life to grow up and, uh, and acquire many uh, skills and virtues. And with little support at home, you can imagine he had fallen behind in school and was quite a poor student. But he recounted the story that at the end of his uh, first year of uh, grade school, he had failed and he would have to repeat it. But it, was, but it so happened that the, the religious sister who was his first grade teacher, at that time they wore those long, uh, beautiful habits, and she had a long uh, arm was flowing with her habit, and she drew the little boy to, him, to herself at the end of first grade, and she said, Bobby, I love you so much that I want you to stay with us here in first grade again for another year. He was so thrilled to be so loved and so wanted. It was that event in his life that this man said, it gave him the confidence he needed to really turn his life around. There's that sweeping extended arm of that beautiful first grade uh, teaching sister is yet another beautiful and apt image of the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. His role is to call us to his side, to embrace us, and to, tra uh, to transfer his strength and his wisdom to us. So Paderewski assisting the young pianist the coach guiding a young player, or the first grade uh, teaching sister encouraging her student, are all beautiful images for us to reflect upon the power, the person, the role of the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, as the one sent by our Heavenly Father and his Son, who sits now at the right hand, who together send into the world the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit is with us by our side, to enlighten us, to encourage us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, and to protect us. So my dear friends, this great Jubilee Day, 50 days after Easter, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. And on this great solemnity, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, that special moment in the upper room when the, apostles, when the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles and the Blessed Mother in the upper room. 50 days after our Lord's resurrection on Easter Sunday morning, when Jesus rose from the dead, but before he ascended into heaven during the 40 days from Easter Sunday to, to Ascension Thursday, during this time of post-resurrection appearances, our Lord promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to us to be with us, to be our paraclete, that is the Greek word. The, the Latin translation is the advocate. It's the same, uh, same Latin uh, uh, idea. An advocate is vocari, the one who calls you what to their side. Uh, so we, we use that in law. Your, your lawyer is your advocate, the one who calls you to the side to give you wisdom and strength and so forth. He is to be our paraclete, our advocate, our consoler, the one who will teach us and lead us in all truth. And so on that first Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles and encircled all of those gathered in that first church in the upper room, the first parish church, pouring out his love, his truth, and his strength so that they would be um, vivified in, by the Holy Spirit and empowered to, to go forth from that first church, that first parish church, to go into the world, to live out the Holy Gospel, and to spread that Holy Gospel. And in a beautiful way, this is the celebration of the birth of the church. It is from that moment, that first meeting in the upper room, that first, if you will, um, uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday, that the apostles left the room, enlivened by the Holy Spirit to live beautiful lives, to live out the gospel, and to share the gospel. In a similar fashion, the Holy Spirit comes to us 
to lead us into truth and to bring all his gifts necessary for us to be guided, to be encouraged, to be strengthened, to be protected. And so, uh, my dear friends, perhaps as we gather again at this worldwide moment of pandemic with great, great uh, setbacks in, uh, in health, a great loss in the lives of our, our loved ones, in the great economic setbacks, it's a moment if we survey the problems and challenges of the world, may, we may be tempted to be discouraged especially when we're confronted by the size of these problems. And it may even cripple us to want to do nothing. But it's precisely at this moment when God sends the Holy Spirit. We may look, for, uh, we may look out and see the vast number of poor, more and more people becoming unemployed, homeless, and we can fret to ourselves, how can I, with my limited talents and my limited resources, put even a dent in this enormous problem? Or we may look and see in the, in the newspapers and media and the neighborhoods how much an ocean of hatred and division and anger in the world and say to oneself, how can I with my limited love change all of this? Or we can see the immense apathy and indifference even by many of our own uh, fellow Christians and say, how can I possibly reverse all of this situation? Just as the great maestro Paderewski built upon the little boy's limited musical talent and in turn uh, created something more wonderful, something greater, something more beautiful. In the same way, the Holy Spirit takes our limited labors, our limited talents, our limited con uh, com uh, uh, contributions, and he brings about something greater, something more wonderful, something more beautiful. And this is the good news of the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we are not alone and that each beautiful contribution is expanded and increased to make a significant difference in the world. The good news of the Pentecost is the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit who comes to us. And with everything we do, it is now purified and expanded by the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always with us guiding us, encouraging us, loving us, protecting us, but most of all, taking whatever small contribution we have to offer and transforming it into something greater, something more beautiful, something more wonderful. My dear friends, let us together rise and profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear friends, just as Jesus sent the Holy Spirit upon the apostles at Pentecost, so now does he send that same Spirit upon us. Let us bring our needs before our Heavenly Father, confident that the Holy Spirit is alive and well in our community. For the Church, that we may faithfully confess Jesus as Lord and be guided by the Holy Spirit to continue the mission of Christ in our time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our Lord. prayer. For a spirit of wisdom for all government and business leaders, that they will develop policies for reopening society that both protect society and promote the well-being of everyone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for fuller utilization of the gifts of the Spirit, that God will help us recognize and put into practice all the gifts which we have been given so that the body of Christ may be strong in serving the reign of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a new Pentecost, that God will pour out the Spirit in a new and abundant way to renew humanity and all of creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit of healing, that God will touch all who are ill, particularly those with COVID-19, strengthen their minds, bodies, and spirits, and restore them to wholeness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of life, that God will be merciful and give eternal life to all who have died or who are approaching death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father all-powerful, receive these prayers from a people made one by your Holy Spirit, who always dwells within us through Christ our Lord. As our gifts are brought forward and our table is prepared, let us join in singing number 521, O Breathe on Me, O Breath of God, number 521. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 626, Come to the Water, number 626. For those who now cannot receive the Blessed Sacrament, let us pray together a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you, you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, I want to thank you for joining us virtually for this beautiful celebration for God's love for us and our love for the Lord at this time. I'm sure some of you have uh, seen and read in the papers that the, uh, the, the Pennsylvania government will move the phase uh, to, from red to yellow uh, next week. Uh, in addition, the archdiocese will be uh, moving also into what they call a restricted phase, which corresponds to the civil government uh, yellow phase. So I'm happy to say that Saturday, June 6, uh, the church will be open to celebrate public liturgies, masses, and the sacraments in a restricted way. In today's bulletin that has been sent to you electronically, as well in the, in the next week, we'll be sending to our parishioners information regarding uh, opening uh, for public masses in the coming days. So I'm happy to say next Sunday we will begin with, uh, with, the, uh, with a restricted opening. Um, uh, the, the, the Archbishop's dispensation from the obligation to attend Mass continues, and so no one is obliged to attend Sunday Mass during this next phase, beginning next uh, Saturday, uh, because of the concerns for the the uh, pandemic. Uh, we'll have various mitigating procedures in place during this next period of time. We're not sure how long it will be, but what is, the government is calling the yellow phase, but the church of the archdiocese is referring to the re restricted phase. We'll have heightened uh, sanita uh, sanitization procedures to ensure that everything is cleaned before and in between the masses. There will be. Uh, there will also be uh, uh, so social distancing. We'll regulate what pews can be used uh, during the liturgies. They'll be uh, clearly marked, uh, and our congregation will be invited to wear masks. Uh, in, a, in addition, uh, the, we'll we'll have some occupancy uh, re restrictions, uh, up to 50% of the of the of the church. But uh, fear not, my dear friends, in today's bulletin, uh, which you can receive online, a website, and in the coming days, we will give uh, specific, detailed instructions about what will be in place uh, to, one, safeguard the well-being, the, the, the physical well-being of all of our parishioners, but at the same time, to beautifully open it up and allow uh, our uh, community to have access to all the great graces that the church offers through the sacraments. So I look forward. I'm grateful for your collaboration uh, and support in the coming days as, uh, as we open up to uh, public celebrations of the liturgy. We miss you and we look forward to seeing you soon. And now the final blessing on this glorious day.
when we come uh, after 50 days of joyful celebration, in a very, very, very unique way this year. But we're grateful for Almighty God for sustaining all of us uh, through this period, especially during the pandemic. And so I'll give you a final solemn blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of light, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the masses ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Have a lovely week, everyone. Our recessional is number 567, God We Praise You, number 567. God, we praise you, God, we bless you, God, we name you, sovereign Lord, mighty King, whom angels worship, Father, by your church adored. All creation shows your glory, heaven and earth draw near your throne. of hosts and God alone, true apostles, faithful prophets, saints who set their world ablaze, martyrs once unknown, unheeded, join one growing song of praise, while your church on earth confesses one majestic trinity. Father, Son, 